damn it, Prospect Army, I just can't quit you. I've done two videos today, both times falsely declaring it would be my last video before I left on vacation, and sure enough, stuff kept happening. The Cowboys broke huge news earlier, so I had to talk about that. And, because I wasn't thinking about what day it was anymore, I forgot the Mavericks had a game tonight. Now, I'll admit, this is going to be a somewhat brief post-game show here, but I do want to talk about the game a little bit. I haven't left town just yet, so I'm still here to talk about it. The Dallas Mavericks get a much-needed home victory here against the Chicago Bulls, 118-110 behind Luka Doncic's 38-point, 11-rebound, 10-assist, triple-double. Now, despite the win, Mavericks, 10 games over 500, still sit in 6th place in the Western Conference standings, and they had some good news here tonight, right? Tim Hardaway Jr. made his return from his hamstring injury, Started the game 5 of 5, I think 14 points in the first quarter. And he ends up scoring 15 for the game. Didn't need a whole lot more out of him. He cooled off, obviously, missed his last three shots. But 5 of 8 from the field, 3 of 4 from 3. Made some big plays, I thought, for the team early on. He even had a a steal in here, I believe, early on in the game. Uh, Let me double check that. Yep, had a steal. Uh, 2 of 2 at the line as well. I mean, a plus 8 overall. Very solid return for Tim Hardaway Jr. Came in. What I liked is he attacked the basket a couple times. Got an and one at one point. He didn't didn't show any favorability coming back from an injury. Sometimes guys will be a little bit reluctant to really mix it up in there. They want to kind of take it easy and just take spot-up jumpers that are open. Not really aggressive, pushing off, cutting, driving, things like that. He showed a willingness to do that, and I thought that was big for uh, his overall recovery. Not recovery, but just kind of working his way back in. It's good to see he's not treating it like it's training wheels. Uh, You also had, in the second quarter then, Dwight Powell with a pretty nice performance there. Helped push Dallas as well. He had another double-digit quarter there for him. You know, Dwight Powell, he's pretty much a kicking bag, or a punching bag would be a more accurate term. A punching bag on this roster, and I see the issues that are there. But, you know, we can't just completely dogpile on him and act like he has nothing he brings to the team. Because as Chuck Cooperstein points out, he says, quote, If Mavs fans have a whipping boy, it's Dwight Powell, and I'm not sure why. His last, his last six games, 11.8 points, 7.8 rebounds, 2 steals, 1.17 blocks. For the season, the Mavericks are 9.8, a plus 9.8 with him on the floor. He screens, he rolls, he plays hard. Exactly what's not to like, he asks. Now, we've talked about the issues that he has. His post-defense, low post-defense, is a very lackluster. It leaves a lot to be desired. And you see the you know the three-point shot's not great for him right now. There are flaws, certainly, to his game. But I think if he made like f- five, six million, people wouldn't really say much. So why he's the whipping boy, I don't know. Tim Hardaway Jr. was early in the year, but then Hardaway Jr. came on, so we pivoted to the next guy. Seth Curry is another guy that gets a lot of whipping, and this was not a good game for Seth Curry. 0 of 6 from 3, 2 of 8 overall from the field for 4 points in 21 minutes. 2, po- or two rebounds, 3 assists as well for Seth. Uh, I'm, I'm, wor- I'm beginning to get a, a smidge worried about Seth. The inconsistency is starting to become a bother to me. And I know, I know it's not, you know, he's getting the minutes. That's not the problem. It's not inconsistency in playing. I think DeLon Wright, uh, you know, he got 25 minutes as well. I think DeLon Wright uh, is a guy who he can show out and do some things for us as well. I'd like to see him get more opportunity occasionally in the starting lineup, but it is what it is still for DeLon Wright. 25 minutes, 9 points, 6 boards, 3 assists, 3 of 3 from the field, uh, 2 of 2 from 3, 1 of 2 at the line. I mean, pretty quality stuff from him there. I just feel like I'd like to see a little bit more. Now, where this game really separated because the first half was rather close, this game separated in the third quarter a little bit, Mavs take what was a six-point lead at half, 61-55, and they end up pushing it to a 13-point lead going into the fourth quarter. And that's because Luka Doncic went off. Luka, 21 points 
in the third quarter. He basically uh, he basically put on a show by himself in that regard, and as a result, Dallas was sitting pretty. Pretty. Excuse me, I said a 13-point lead earlier. It was a 6-point lead going into the 4th. The lead got up to 13 uh, going into the final few minutes. I misspoke and flipped those situations there. But Dallas was sitting in a good situation. And hey, you know, they closed the game out well. Now, one thing I can say about Luka, only 5 of 9 at the free throw line. The crowd chanting MVP for him because he's put up another triple-double, another 38-point triple-double, and he misses... Free throws. Just keeps missing free throws. Misses. Uh, I, I saw. I, I don't know if he went over four in those two stretches, but I know he missed at least his last two at the line while the crowd was chanting MVP. Cost himself a 40 point triple double, but whatever. It, it doesn't matter. There was a stretch there in the third quarter where he was absolute brilliance. Uh, he was throwing everything up and it was dropping. It didn't matter. 14 of 24 from the field, 5 of 10 from three. Even got a block, if not for the subpar free throw shooting. I think he's got a near perfect night by his standards. Three turnovers, yeah, but he's still a plus eight on the game. So there's a lot to look at and appreciate here for the Mavericks in this game. Um, This is a good win. This is, you know, I know it got a little bit close towards the end. The Bulls got way too many points in the paint. Uh, I, I think I stopped paying attention to that at like 60. I mean, the Mavericks were not getting uh the Mavericks interior defense in the third quarter while Luka was being brilliant um there just wasn't enough in that we saw that in the fourth quarter too Dallas would score they were scoring pretty handily at that point but they weren't getting the stops and they were giving up a lot of baskets right around the paint so uh that's something they're gonna have to still look at but this team is built to mainly outscore you and to hopefully play just enough defense to skate by now, Dallas for the game shot 52% compared to 42%, sorry, 47% for the Bulls. Three-point shooting, Dallas much better tonight, 39% compared to 29 for shot uh, for Shy Town. Free throws, Dallas 14 of 19, so they got more free throw attempts than the Bulls. They, in fact, made more free throws than the Bulls even attempted. You do that most nights, it's going to serve you well. Bulls shot 82%, but on just 9 of 11. Dallas, uh... Not good in the turnover department, just a tick below their typical production. 14 turnovers compared to only 8 for Chicago. They split an assist, 25 apiece. Rebounds, Chicago won that by 2, and the offensive glass by 6. Again, rebounds without KP, that stat's going to be a little bit more skewed. Um, Blocks, 7 for Chicago, 6 for Dallas. More steals for Chicago, 10 to 5. And uh, Chicago committed 21 fouls compared to just, uh, just 12 for the Mavericks. So... Other than uh, Lori Marketing, you know, showing out 26 points, nine boards for Chicago, uh, 10 of 18 from the field, but four of 10 from three. That's a dude that I would be very interested in having on my team eventually, but uh, I don't see a scenario where Chicago lets him walk. I just don't. Um, Zach Levine, 20 points, seven, seven assists, five boards. He had himself a nice game as well. Chicago had a bunch of guys that uh, put you know put some production together, um, but nothing nothing quite enough to get over the hump. I mean, you got all of, only one guy on your team didn't give you at least six who played in this game. Well, Hutchinson got six minutes too, apparently, but you basically got 20, 26, 11, 6, 6, 11, 13, 15, and two for Chicago out of their guys that played tonight. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty well distributed uh, stats there. But, you know, it is what it is. They didn't get enough out of that. And they couldn't deal with Dallas's three-point shooting. And especially in that third quarter, Luka's touch. And then Maxi had some moments there as well. Um, yeah, no, I know Maxi just had seven points. But it seemed like he had a couple shots there that were pretty big timing. So that's, uh, that's the gist of this game. I'm not going to prattle on too long about this again. This is a game that because I'm doing packing right before my morning flight, I was only, you know, half attention a lot of the time. So I'm not going to try and act like I'm an authority on this exact game. I like to uh, I like to think that I bring my best to the table anytime except this where I feel like this one. I'm kind of at that uh, casual mode right now. It's not my highest standard, but you know what? I know I'm going to miss the next couple, so I wanted to still touch on this game, talk about what I could talk about, and cover this for you. So 
That's going to do it for my time. Look at this, just barely over 10 minutes. I've lost my touch. Uh, don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Oh, and check out the shirts on uh, represent.com. Peace. Okay, for real, for real, this is my last video before my trip. I mean it this time.